B. Big up there. What's going on, baby? Everything good, man. I'm still grinding. We still here. Okay. Okay. Well, we don't have much time, so I just want to get caught up with you real quick. Uh, first and foremost, July of last year, because originally you were sentenced to 75 years, but then last July you said you got yeah. reduced to 20 years and then to 12 years. So explain. Mm-hmm. Well, well, you know, we, uh, I'm eligible for my full minimum status in February, so I most likely be, you know, by the end of next year, I'll be like in halfway house. That's like worst case scenario, halfway house at the end of the next year. So that's why I said that. But it's going down. I'm here. I'm on my way. I gave my shit back. I didn't do the most part for the most part. So right now I'm just finding out, get ready. I'm almost there. It's almost over. So, okay, so you know, I can only say that but so much, but it's actually, it's actually two this time, so you'll be good. Okay, so explain to everyone how you go from 75 to 12. Well, I went back on post-conviction. My, I, my sentence was vacated for 75 years, so I got back on. Um, my first appeal was denied, then when I went back on post-conviction, I was, uh, I found ineffective assistance against my lawyer, and before the case was came back for it, before the judge made an actual decision or decided to turn the whole case over, we just I just plead, I pleaded out. I couldn't go through the, 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 uh, I couldn't go through waiting for another decision or the court, you know what I'm saying, or another letdown. So I just took the I took the twenty. So that with my with my time in and once I go down once I get once I get full minimum, I'll be down to about twelve, twelve and a half years, which will have me in uh I'll be in the camp I'll be in the camp February and by the end of next year I'll be in the halfway house. So that's why I said that like that. But uh yeah, you know, it's a whole thing as far as my case and how I how I break it down or but that's a whole nother we're gonna need some calls for that one. No, I feel you. I mean how did it feel? Because you went in, you know, you got sentenced in your thirties and they're telling you you have seventy five years, which means that you know, you're looking at it dying in prison potentially to suddenly being told, hey, you're going to get out at first, you know, in 20 years, then at 12, which we're just about at right now. Like, how did that feel to know that you're going to get your life back at one point? It just felt good. It felt, it felt the equivalency. It felt just as good. Like, you know how, I'm going to, I'm going to explain it. It's like you, the way the way when I lost my life when they took it that pain it felt that good when it was when I got daylight again so to that effect you know what I'm saying it felt very good it felt rejuvenated my family was happy you know what I'm saying everybody was happy it's just like a new life again you know what I'm saying they tell you one thing and that's what you used to but we never gave up the fight you know we I was up there you know doing my thing but. I was studying too, getting ready to come back because I always kept faith, kept fighting. But it felt great. We here. And you never lose the fight. Okay. And then I guess last February you got moved to a minimum security prison? I'm in uh, Northern now. We in the trailers running around. So it's like minimum. It's kind of like minimum classification. But February, like around uh, February, I go for my shift. So I'll be like, by, by, next, by the beginning of next year, I'll be like full minimum. I'll be. I'll be I'll be working outside the facility type of shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so before you got moved last time, you were in a maximum security prison. I was in train, which is max, and then I went down the roadway, which is another max. Now, man. All right, so now that you actually feel like you have a release date and you're going to be getting out, and you actually start releasing music, now how are you actually putting all this together? I mean, listen, you know, I got a system. I don't want to display that yet because we got a lot of things, a lot of things and a lot of prospects is, in, is, is on the horizon. So I can't break that down just yet. But I tell you this, it's not because I was getting released that I was putting out music. You know what I'm saying? I just had an opportunity to make music. So I put some music out and it just so happened that, you know, it's, it is what it is. But I never stopped working on music even when I got, when I blew trial, I always used to break my music. So. If you're wondering why I still sound polished, that's why. You know, I never stop doing what I do. I mean, is prison a, a place where you could actually be creative and you could actually create that type of art, considering where you are? 
I mean, listen, that's that's one of the things that this is why I ask the people. This is one of the things that I ask y'all to take in consideration when I make these joints. Look at my circumstances. Look where I'm at. And yet I'm still able to come up with these beautiful concepts and these wavy loops that got y'all going on. You know what I'm saying? So it's not the place to be creative, but it's a place you can be creative. I feel that me, somebody like me that can go in my own oasis, go in my own mind whenever I want, or that, that's where I usually live at. They don't, it's not a problem for me to come up with creative stuff. I always do it. So it is what it is. I like being away, being tucked away where I have the opportunity to actually be creative. So, I mean, listen, it works both ways. If it works for you, it works against you. Uh, I, I can work in prison. It's no problem for me. Okay. Yeah, I remember when you first got locked up, you and Jim Jones was really going at it. But then uh, last year, no, in 2018 in December, Jim actually played your music at a Dipset show. And these days, it seemed like y'all squashed it, you know. And uh, French Montana actually did a song with uh, with Jim Jones recently. Well, what do you think about all that, and how do you feel about that whole situation? I mean, you know, it's just, listen, it was, a, it was a long time ago me and Jim was going through our little thing. You know, we was a little younger. We were still men, but we was younger. So we was all running around crazy. But, you know, bygones is bygones. We all moved on. Everybody elevating their life. Everybody got kids to feed now, so we moving on. We not we not we not dwelling on past issues. I don't want to be out come home worrying about past issues or past beef or rival crews and things that I need. I think we all need to focus up, level up, get this money and do what they need to do. It's all love. I'm I'm here for the love and the great music, and I don't want no beef. So I'm just trying to make amends with everybody who I you know, had issues with, so when I come out, I can have a clean slate and we can make history. That's dope, man, because honestly, what you did before you got locked up and that whole style, like the whole singing and rapping, you know, the New York type singing and rapping really carried on. And I think a lot of people really took what you developed and ran with it and became millionaires and became famous and so forth. It'd be dope to actually see the originator come back and do it all over again. It, it, it'll be a dream come true to come back and do it all over again, which I believe is going to happen, which is already in the process of happening. We already did. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, like I said, we drop it. We put out great music. A lot of a lot of time and effort goes into the projects I put together here and the circumstances I'm in. So take that consideration, you know what I'm saying, and you know, support the music. Support the movement, you know what I'm saying? We got we post my shit. We show love, you know what I'm saying? Pop smoke throughout the day, rest, rest in peace to pop smoke. We post his shit, post my shit. And whoever drop, we support each other. Shit. That's how we got to keep this thing going. We got to start keeping it, keeping it in house, keeping our shit where it needs to be, and start repping each other, holding each other down. But you already know what it is, lad. I'm here. I'm 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 I'm, I'm working, man. I'm on my way. They gonna have to end me up anyway, cause when I come out next year, it's up. I got a lot of work and my shit's still official, so we're going to see. Yeah, man, we can't wait. But I, I remember like four years ago when Kanye uh, when Kanye was going to do Waves, I remember oh, yeah, you actually, that was 2016, I remember because everyone was contributing you to Waves, and you actually jumped on Kanye's album and said it was all good. It's all love. Like I said, I'm trying to, I'd rather network than to be you know what I'm saying? Then to be ops with these dudes, I'd rather network, link up, and just do it and do it again. Get, get to the briefcase, but we still here. One of the things I want to talk to you about that you and I never talked before is uh, your name. I guess it's a mix between Biggie, Tupac, and Jay Z. Yeah, what about it? You said my name? Yeah, like from what I understand, like your name, uh, Max B and Big Avelli, you kind of. Oh, you go on Big Avelli? Okay. Yeah. Explain that. Oh, it's a mixture of uh, big, big, it's a, it's a mixture of big Jigger and Machiavelli all in one formula, which is Max Bigavelli, which is my AKA, which is one of my various numerous AKAs. You already know I'm in, I'm in, I'm in more as, as we just dropped Charlie, so I'm back in that mode. But uh, that's all that be. You already know that's just one of my handles, Bigavelli. It is what it is. 
Right. And you've got a ton of AKAs. Can you break down all the names that you used over the years? Yeah. That's good stuff. That's 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 to keep the music going when I pop them when I pop them AKs off like that. When I'm off into them characters like that, that's me expanding my creative genius to the world, letting them know this is how I get into my bag for y'all. I go into these characters. You know what I'm saying? Right, because the other names are Big Avelli, Big uh, Boss Don, Silver Surfer, Wavy Crockett, Wave God, Wave Master. Am I missing something? Yeah. <laughs> said Wave Master. <laughs> Don Valley, Don Snow. Yeah, you know, you know, you got it. Okay. I got most of them. Well, you know, speaking of Jay Z, you actually uh, got a shout out uh, from him on the song Three Kings. He said, uh, Murder was a case that they gave me. Oh, wait, what did he say? He said, uh, okay, it's a song called Three Kings with Dr. Oh, Dre yeah. and uh, Red Cross. You heard that? Yeah, I and heard he it. He said, uh, the, the verse is, uh, Jay-Z said, murder was a case that they gave me. I killed their Ernesto or somebody saved me. Stunting to the max like wavy. It was a case that they gave me. And what he said? He said, I killed the Ernesto or somebody saved me. Stunting to the max like oh, it was wavy. A case that they Oh, to the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, he just said it's it to the back like, like a wave. Yeah. Listen, man, you can't take Jay-Z. Listen, man, sometimes when you take Jay-Z shout-outs, man, you can't, you got to take his shout-outs. Sometimes they could, they could make you or break you, man. You don't know what you don't know what you're getting out of the hole with his shout-outs, man. <laughs> so, I'm saying, it was the love. I heard the love. You know what I'm saying? But you never know. Like I said, man, it's, Oh, that's like a box of chocolates, man. You don't know what the fuck you're going to get. You, you might be, he might shout you out one day, the next day you might be on some song with, with your, with your shit hanging on thread, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Did you ever run into Jay before? Nah, I never met the big homie. I never met the big homie, unfortunately. And I met a lot of people in this business, but he, he's one of the, unfortunately, he's one of the, the uh, people I haven't met while while my experience through the business, but I'm looking forward to you know working with the big fella. That'll be a real nice project if y'all get the boss on in the studio or at home. You know what that'll sound like. Okay, now originally when you started, you were in Bird Gang, and you guys had some classic songs yeah. during that time. Well, one of the other members of Bird Gang is Mel Matrix. And he recently got sentenced to 11 years. Did you guys keep in touch at all Man. over the years? Nah, unfortunately not. I haven't kept in touch with nobody from that camp. I just, I just been doing me. Just you know what I'm saying. But I heard about him. Shout, shout the mail, man. I know he's going to do his niggas going to do their time. So you know, I ain't wishing no time on nobody. But shout to everybody going out there doing what they need to do to get to get back. You know what I'm saying? It's all love. But I haven't spoken to them now. I mean, when you heard about the whole Takashi thing and how he told on everyone and gave out like over a hundred years, uh, how'd that make you feel? Nah, I ain't really know none of them. I ain't know a bunch of them. I ain't in none of that. I mean, listen, I ain't in that street life. I ain't in, I ain't involved in no gang. So that really didn't matter to me. It is what it is. Takashi did what he did. Hey, they gonna they gonna buy that shit anyway. And see, that's what it looked like. It looked like nobody cared because. They still support the music, so it is what it is. It ain't got nothing to do with me. To each your own, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I listen. I'm doing a different brand of style of music over here, man. So you already know what I'm representing, what my sound represents, and how we bringing it to the table. So that's that's it, man. You know, I ain't got no opinion on that. I'm gonna just keep my opinion to myself on that matter. Fair enough. <laughs> you're an OG at this point. You you've been, you know, you're you're older. You've been through the ups and downs of life. You know, you're still locked up right now. But when you look at, for example, some of the some of the people that you've been affiliated with or you've known, you know, we've lost stack bundles. Chink's drugs got killed, you know, and that was someone that was close to Frank, who you've always been close to. Just recently, we lost Pop Smoke. Mm-hmm. You know, as someone who's been through yep. all that, if you could, you know, look at the younger kids who are coming up, the young, wild, 20-year-old rappers who are out there, you know, pushing the line and, and, and acting reckless, what would you tell them to avoid some of these same situations that, that some of your friends ended up going through? 
I just always, I always try to mentor. I, I be doing that now. I be mentoring the, um, the young brothers in here. I always tell them, you know what I'm saying? If y'all go through y'all stuff and do it in this business, you know, just go hard and do everything the right way. Do everything the proper way, man. Try to get your paperwork in order and do everything right so you ain't got to put yourself in a position where you're not getting compensated for your work. So when you, when you push it out, now you got to be forced to go out there and, you know, because you ain't, you ain't had your business right. Now you got to get your money. Now you got to do something other than what you're supposed to be doing to make your money. And, um, you know, that's what we go wrong. Sometimes our business our business don't be right. You know what I'm saying? We got to have our business square when we, when we deal with this business. So I say that to say, you know, brothers coming up in my game, in this game, you know, watching me come up, just learn from my mistakes. Learn how I had the wrong people around me. I had the uh, you know the negative crowd around me. Learn how to scope out the people that's down for you. You know you know the real ones that's down for you and the ones who ain't. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta level that shit up and keep this keep keep your keep your circle small and keep everybody where you can see them because this go haywire on you in a minute. One minute it could be good for you and just like that it could be gone. So you know that's it. That's all I can say about that. Just be on your P's and Q's, cause. Tomorrow ain't promised, you know what I'm saying? You and you and French have, have always sounded good together. And I remember I knew French when he was still the DVD guy. Now, I was the DVD guy. He was the DVD guy. We'd be waiting, you know, in the same lobby, waiting to do an interview with a rapper. And then once he got with you, I felt like he really got into his groove and he learned from the way you do music and kind of incorporated it into his own thing. Like, how did the two of you initially link up? Well, um, French... French just we just linked up through the street when we was running around. When I was doing my thing, like right after I stopped messing with Jim, I was like running around in business, grinding in the street, grinding off the DVD grinds and all that. That's how I kind of met French. We just linked up through that way, but we turned out to be, you know, we was bros. So you know, he got a love, for, he got a love and a passion for music. So once I saw that, I just kind of took him under the wing on that level, just on the musical level. So. That's as far as that extent goes. We already was bros, you know what I'm saying? So, but that's that's why we work so good together because the chemistry is there. You already know we bros. In and, and in and out the studio, we always putting it together. We always in the studio. We always working. We always trying to come up with different different concepts and stuff. So that's just about it. It wasn't nothing special how we linked up. Just through the street and just through the through the through the grinding channels of the business, and that's it. So, uh, how did it feel to to see? you know, the, the blueprint that you and French put together. And then, you know, when you got locked up, he actually took that and turned into a platinum rapper. You know, became one of the biggest rappers, you know, during different eras. You know, songs with Drake and platinum singles and everything else like that. How did it feel seeing that? And unfortunately, you couldn't participate, but seeing your homie do that. Now, it felt good knowing that he was doing that when I was in here. That felt marvelous because I, I already knew he had the potential to do it. So that was just my whole thing that before I had got locked up, when I was out on bail, I was like, well, let, let me just try to put all the all the energy and love and support I had into him before I went in. And, you know, even whatever, for whatever it was worth, whatever treatment he got out of my shit, the elf elevation, whatever it was worth, it was all for the cause, so I don't mind. I love seeing French do what he do. I love it. It's, it's, it's no, I never get tired of seeing him do his numbers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he surprised me because, like I said, me and him were just doing DVDs one day. Next thing you know, he's actually a successful rapper. It's, it's crazy, you know. And I'm happy for him. You know, exactly. We did a lot of his. Uh, we did a lot of his early interviews. Exactly. And we actually, we even filmed some of his music videos early on. So. So it was dope to see someone kind of like exactly. from my freshman class do do what they did. Yeah, I'm with you. You know that's my boy. You know we hold it up. Do people recognize you in prison? I mean, do you have fans as you walk the yard? I mean, you know, I'm here with everybody every day, so it's different to where if you don't, if you're in the street and you don't see somebody, and or you or you see your favorite artist in the street. You know what I'm saying? It's different to where you locked up with a dude every day and y'all see each other. You know what I'm saying? So 
it's different. These niggas see me every day. It's not the excitement is not there. But yeah, everybody recognize me. You already know. You know. You know the Don is a household name. You know that. Come on, Vlad. You know this. Right. Of course. <laughs> Have you run into any other uh, any other artists or, or or celebrities while locked up in, in the same prison? Nah, this is it. This is only me. I'm the only one out here in this that had to endure <laughs> this travesty of justice that I would that I've been endured in the past twelve years. I've been the only one to endure this, unfortunately, but it's almost over. And you know, I just been working and grinding, and getting this thing ready. So you know, I just wanted to put this music out and just give them something. To, you know, while we going through this little pandemic, I was hoping to, um, you know take people mind off it with some good girls so I dropped Charlie. Yeah. What are your plans when you get out? Do you have like a like a game plan of what you're gonna do your first week out? Yeah, I'm saying you know me, I'm basic man. I'm, I'm gonna be with the family, you know I got kids and shit. You know I'm gonna chill with the lady, get this shit right. And then I'm going to get to work, man. I'm going to go out here and get to work and put some stuff out here one last time before I, um, before I, before I cancel this shit. Because, I'm, you know, I ain't going to be doing this forever. I'm about to go on my little retirement mode. But I'm going to put together one last package for y'all. That's uh, that, that going to probably last y'all for the next couple of um, decades, all right? So just get ready for that. I'm going to line y'all up real nice. And uh, that's it, man. That's it. Y'all go. Y'all go. Know Max B was on this planet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't imagine you retiring. I'm just saying. As much as much work as you put out, because didn't you drop I mean, them, you like, know, you ten know, albums you know. at once at some point? Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't see that. I'm, I'm, yo, I'm my man said the same. He was like, yo, <laughs> that's what my nah. man said. He's like, yo, I don't see you. He's like, you just a dude that I see doing music forever, no matter what it is, whether it's like writing some type of commercial, some shit you said, you just in the music too much. You love music too much not to be doing it. So I was like, all right, well, whatever. You know, it is what it is. But, you know, hopefully I ain't got to retire. Hopefully I can keep laying these things on y'all. Because this Negro, this Negro spirituals, man, it's going to be special. <laughs> oh, that's the name? That's the name of the album, Negro Spirit, which is I'm dropping. Right now, we just did Charlie, so we got Charlie on there for our songs, you know, for the people. Wanted to give y'all something nice. Let y'all know I still had it. Let y'all know I was even better than before. So it is what it is. Y'all, y'all hear it. Y'all hear, the, y'all hear the sound. Y'all hear the elegant. Yeah. I mean, being in person, do you actually get to hear the music? Like, do you, do you get to... Uh, uh, do you have internet access at all? I mean, do people send you tapes or, or how, how does it work? Nah, listen, no, but no internet access. Nobody. Now I do. I go through a lot of process to get my music sent in here. That's a whole nother delay for a whole nother delay. We're gonna talk about that on a whole nother interview. I'm just tell you, it, that's a whole nother thing right there on how I get the how I do my. Sh- that's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? You want to pass the whole other shit right there, baby. I'm telling you. That's the shit. But I can get that shit done. Niggas got to respect it. I'm a hard body, yo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is that you on the cover of the Charlie album? Is that you and your parents? That's me, my mom, and my dad back in the day. You like that? Yeah, it's dope. <laughs> I, I see how I did that? You see how I connected you guys? Yeah, I did that. Yeah, yeah. No, I like I like the old school. You know, was, like the old old Polaroid pictures. You know, before digital. That was for me. I did chop me. I had to put something out for me as far as like, because I was putting out music and my family was like, well, when you gonna put something out for you know what went for us? Everything is always. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna put something out with a little. You know, some a little more orientated and, and more lines to make Ma proud. So when she hear the song, I'll be like, look, Ma made this. You know what I'm saying? So that was that right there. That wasn't a record that was supposed to be like, oh, it is hot. Well, that's hard. That wasn't for that. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, the fifth song on the on the project, Didn't Mean to Kill a Man. What's that about? Explain. That's the last song. 
Yeah. yeah. That's another that's another testimony. That's another testimony. These are testimonial records. Kill a man and um and and, 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 and um good man. Those are testimonial records right there. That's me just giving my testimony, being real, being a hundred, putting it all out there, letting you know, you know what I'm saying, being vulnerable, giving you the real shit. That's all that is. How do your kids take take you being locked up? Like, how often do you get to see them? How often what? How often do you get to see your kids? Oh, I don't know. Every 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 few weeks or so often. It's just that this Corona shit kind of screwed everything up. But when Corona ain't rolling, I be seeing my babies. You know what I'm saying? They come through. Shout out to my baby mothers. They bring the babies through. It is what it is. <laughs> Uh, how is coronavirus affecting the prisons right now? Like, well, what's the big difference that you're seeing? What, with the virus and all that? I'm saying they gave us yeah. masks and shit. You're sick in here. Everybody had that. Another had COVID. Everybody had COVID there. Everybody beat that shit. Oh, you got died, it? Uh, passed away, unfortunately. I had COVID. I didn't go make a big fuss about it, go all on the internet telling everybody I had the shit. But I had it. It wasn't no big oh. deal. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so what was the what was the worst thing? Like, what did you go through? Explain what having COVID is for someone who doesn't know, like me. I I I had symptoms. I had fever. I had back pains. I had body pains. I had my eyeballs was hurting for two weeks. We was all fucked up and off that shit. We couldn't go nowhere. We was coughing on each other. We all had that. Shit. Everybody was fucked up for like damn near a month. Everybody, so. That's that. But we good. They unlocked this shit. We was locked down. We back. Everybody back. I didn't go on tweeting and telling everybody, oh, man, we got COVID. I'm not doing all that stupid goofball shit. You already know what it is. COVID ain't got nothing on the thong. We write that shit up. We, 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 we bury that cockroach, wretched disease. We on the bigger and better thing. Glad you got through it, man. Out here, people are losing their minds. Yeah, man, we we got we ain't let no disease stop us, man. We done been through real shit. Yeah. I came back seventy five years in prison. You think I'm gonna let COVID nineteen stop me? Yeah, I mean, certain people got are getting out. Like I don't know if you heard, but Big Beach's brother, uh, Southwest T, he got out early because of COVID. Yeah, they is they they let us do dudes out with medical issues and stuff like that. But I have no medical health problems and. Things of that nature. I'm good, so I just gotta go out and get out the way. I'm 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 gonna get out, but I'll be getting out my way. So I'll be getting out soon. Yeah, man. God willing. But you actually knew people that died in there from it. Yeah, they had a couple of heads that passed from it. Like they said, it was like thirty some or forty some dudes that passed from it. But I don't know. I I I don't know nobody personally that died from it. it I, a couple dudes that dropped from that shit, though, but listen, man, it is what it is, man. You got to be prayed up. You got to be on your bike. You got to be ready for this shit. Go down. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, if you could tell me the hardest thing that you have to go through being locked up this long, what is the absolute worst thing? The worst thing of being locked up is you can't go and do what you want to do when you want to do it. That's just it. All right? Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no secret to this or no, no, nobody take nothing different. Well, you can't go and do what you want when you want. That's the bottom line, all right? When you can't see your kids and squeeze your family and your girl and eat what you want and how you, all that count. That's the, that's the suffer from prison right there. So that's the worst thing, not being able to be there with my, with my family in my life. I'm here with this other shit. But it is what it is. We fighting. We still strong. Well, you know, you were you were pretty wild before you got locked up. What do you think was the the best thing that happened to you from this time that you've been locked up? Like, what's the one thing you think you've gained from the experience? This this wisdom, man. Just being on this planet forty two years is enough for me. Just being just being around a lot of dudes, a lot of different men, a lot of different situations, a lot of different crazy areas I grew up in. And just learning from that shit and being around them type of dudes and learning from them mistakes and just trying to be better when I fuck up. So when I make a mistake, just have to be accountable, hold myself accountable 
and be better and just move on with that shit. And don't be holding on to that shit. That's all. But this taught me anything. This real. I say they grew up in jail. You know, jail real, man. I've been in this motherfucker, so. It taught me a lot, but, you know, it is what it is. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it don't, it don't define me. It ain't who I am. It's just an experience I went through, and it's over, so it's going to be over soon, and I'm going to be back to business. Right, because you were you were locked up when, when you were younger, too, for, for a few years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, listen, Max, it, it sounds like, Regardless of where you are right now, it sounds like your spirit is still high, man. It sounds like you still got a smile on your face. Uh, people still, you know, are talking about you on the outside. Uh, Jay Z's making songs mentioning you. Kanye got you on his album. Uh, I mean, you're talking about those are some of the two biggest yeah. periods in music, man. You know, after being gone for so long, I don't think yeah. too many people could say that. But but you could say that about Max B. And, uh, man, it just uh, is a testament yeah, they can't to your body of work, you know, to the work that you did. It just shows how it lives on, man. And I'm glad that you still got your, you know, hopes high. And I, it sounds like you're getting out to the man. And, I'm, you know, a lot of people are happy, including me. And thank you, man. I'm on my way. You know me. I'm just, just staying focused. And I'm going to keep the, uh, you know, I'm going to keep the music going for as long as I can, for, for as long as they allow me, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm having fun with it, so I'm going to just keep trying to make it at a high level for the people. That's what it is, man. Max, wish you the best until we, we see each other in person. Hey, man, thank you, man. I always appreciate it, man. Appreciate the love and support, man. You need me. I'm here for you. No doubt, man. Keep your head up in there.